Ahoy! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Faster, big fellow! I'll Silver! Away! With Tonto and Dan Reed, the Lone Ranger had traveled over 50 miles in record-breaking time to deliver a message to the governor. Then, with a man's freedom and perhaps his life at stake, the three riders had continued on to the prison with a pardon for Jim Loomis. Is this the prison? Ready, big fella. This is it, Dan. You and Tonto wait here for me. I'll be back as soon as I talk to the warden. Warden, the governor said to give it to you personally. Thanks. What? Well, this is a full pardon for Loomis. Jim Loomis. Yes, I know. But who are you? What's the mask for? I took a signed statement to the governor, a dying man's confession. That cleared Loomis. And I brought the pardon directly to you. I understand that. But who are you? A messenger. Yes, a messenger with good news for Jim Loomis. That is, I hope it's good news. He's been here for ten years, hasn't he? And spent the first five of them protesting he was innocent. He was. Well, justice is sometimes blind. Warden, isn't Loomis still protesting his innocence? Life in this place changes the way a man lives and thinks. Yes, I know. The past five years, he hasn't had much to say. His wife's death was a pretty hard blow... I think she was the only one who believed in him. She died? Five years ago. Oh. Since then, he's spoken very little. What he has said shows what's on his mind. What do you mean? Revenge. I've seen other men like that. Sometimes I question the wisdom of releasing a man who... An official pardon gives you no choice, does it? I obey orders, regardless of what I think. Warden, another man confessed the crime for which Loomis was convicted. Yes, I heard about it. A man named Bart Vinton, and he died. Yes, I was there. It'll be hard for Loomis to take revenge on a dead man. Maybe he'll forget about it. He's still young enough to start his life over again. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard for an ex-convict to adjust himself to the idea of being a free man. He can do it. People will help him. I hope so. Well, I'll go and tell him about this now. Thanks for bringing it. You're welcome.
pardon for Jim Loomis. Wonder what he'll say. Loomis? Jim Loomis. Mm. I want to talk to you. I just as soon you didn't. I have some news for you, Jim. Come on into my office. I'm not interested in news. You'll want to hear this. Come on, Jim. That's an order. All right. Funny walking outside the cell. Ain't you afraid to take a chance with a dangerous killer like me? I know how you feel, Jim. Maybe you'll change your mind when you hear what I've got to say. Sit down, Jim. All right, let me have it. How old are you, Loomis? A man of 50 is a lot younger. Hmm. Let's see, you're not much past 30. What do years mean? You just turned 20 when you came here. And that was 10 years ago. What difference does it make? You're still a young man. Lots of men don't really get started in life until they're older than you are. Yeah. I got started once. And what you did once, you can do again. In jail? You're not going to be in jail, Loomis. You're going free. What? Say that again. You're going free. I've just received a full pardon signed by the governor. I can't believe it. It's true. No, you're wrong. You must be. Killers don't go free. They stay in jail. They rot. I'm a killer. The law said so. The law proved it. Well, wait a minute, Jim. I don't think you understand. I understand enough. I understand that this talk about me going free is some new kind of pressure you're putting on me, but someday I will get out of here. And when I do, I'll make Bud Vinton pay Bart for it. Bud Vinton is dead. Dead. No. No, he can't be dead. Vinton's got to stay alive so he can be made to pay and suffer like I suffered for him. Bart tried to square things before he died. Signed a confession clearing you of all blame. When the governor saw that, he issued a pardon. Tried to square things. <laughs> I suppose that brings my wife back. You better forget that revenge talk, Jim. It won't get you anything but a lot more trouble. A Bart Vinton is dead. You're alive. You're young enough to make something of your life. The biggest part of it is still before you. The only thing that's before is a chance to square myself with Ruth. Ruth? I thought your wife... Yeah, Ruth's gone. And Bart Vinton killed her just the same as if he'd shot her to death. But his wife's still alive. Now, wait a minute, Jim. You're not going to pile your hate for Vinton onto his wife. Who says I'm not? When Bart framed me into this place, he killed Ruth. Now, if I'm really free like you say, I'm going to be... Don't be a fool. You'll end up right back here. Or on the gallows. What do I care? I ain't got nothing to live for. If they hang me, I'll be with Ruth that much sooner. Oh, wait. Jim, Is that you... pardon you were talking about the truth? Can I walk out of here now? Yes, but... Then I'm going. What I do from now on, Warden, is my own business. After overhearing the conversation between Jim Loomis and the warden, the Lone Ranger rejoined Tonto and Dan Reed a short distance from the prison walls. I'll bet Jim Loomis was glad to get his pardon. Not exactly, Dan. Uh, what do you mean? Sometimes a pardon seems small compared to ten years of unjust imprisonment. Ah, uh, Loomis want revenge. That's right, Tonto. But the man he wants to kill is already dead. Well, then how can oh, wait. he... Somebody come. I think it's Jim Loomis. There was a saddle horse waiting outside the prison. And what we do? You and Dan ride back to camp. Wait for me there. I want to talk to Loomis. Uh, get him up, Scout. Come on, Victor. Wait. Wait just a minute. Whoa, whoa, you critter. Whoa. What are you... Mask. 
I'd like to talk to you for a moment, Loomis. How do you know my name? You're heading for the town of Buckhorn, aren't you? What if I am? I don't need any mask outlaw to show me the road. I thought perhaps I could help you. I'm dealing my own hands, stranger, by myself. Now let go of that bridle so you I can... You think Mrs. Vinton still lives where she did ten years ago? What do you know about Bart Vinton's wife? Nothing. Listen, stranger. I just got out of that prison back there. I'm an ex-convict. I don't know how you found out my name or how you know so much about me. But I ain't anxious to palaver. I let go of that bridle. It's quite possible that Mrs. Vinton has moved from Buckhorn. She might live over in Prairie Flats. That's the opposite direction. Yeah, she might. She might not. I'm going to pick up where I left off. Buckhorn's where she lived the last I heard about her. I know quite a bit about you, Loomis. Why you went to prison and what you intend doing now. Are you a lawman? No. Then no matter how much you know, you can't stop me. That's true, but... Unless you use one of them guns you're packing. I ain't healed. Suppose you do kill Mrs. Vinton. How will that help you? That's my business, not yours. The law can't... The law can't stop me from thinking. If I do any more than that, they won't know till it's over. Now let go. All right, Loomis. I won't argue with you now. But I think I'll have something to say later on. Better mind your own affairs. Murder or attempted murder is my affair. Come on, Silver. The masked man and his two friends broke camp and rode hard all night. By making use of back trail shortcuts, they arrived in the town of Buckhorn early the following morning. Do you know where Mrs. Vinton lives, Tonto? Ah, that house... Over there. Well, I'm going to talk to her. You and Dan better ride ahead and keep out of sight. Uh, get him up, Scout. Come on, Victor. Oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, steady. I'll be right back, big fellow. Who's there? I want to speak to you, Mrs. Venton. Masked. Please don't be alarmed about the mask. I've come to help you, Mrs. Vinton. Help me? Do you know Jim Loomis? Loomis? I, I've never seen him, but I know who he is. Your husband knew him? Yes. Bart told me that... Told you what, Mrs. Loomis? Why? Well, I, I don't know why I should be talking to you about Bart. Because and... Jim Loomis has just been released from prison. And I want to help you, if you'll let me. Bart's confession, it must have... That's right. It was his confession that gave the governor reason to pardon Jim Loomis... Unfortunately, it didn't change some of Loomis's plans. Now, would you let me help you? I... I don't know. Your husband must have known what might happen. He said Jim Loomis might come hunting for me. He's on his way here now. I don't think he's really a murderer, Mrs. Vinton. But he's being driven by the bitterness of ten years of unfair punishment. I know. It, it must be horrible yes, to... Yes, yes, it is. And as a result of it, your life's in danger. But, but what can I do? Two things. First, you can leave Buckhorn now and keep on going. Hope that Loomis never finds you. But I wouldn't know where to go. Or, if you're willing to take a chance, you might save yourself and help in the salvation of Jim Loomis. Salvation of Jim Loomis? Why should I care about that? Oh, no particular reason. But if you can help someone else while you're helping yourself, why not do it? What do you mean? Jim Loomis is bitter about an unjust jail sentence. Bitter enough to commit murder. He might become an entirely different man if he could rid himself of that one obsession. You and I can help him. That's a strange way to talk. Is it wrong? Of course not, but... Say, who are you? Where are you from? Nowhere and everywhere. I've never... Wait a minute. Is that your horse out there, the white one? Yes. What's his name? I call my horse Silver. Silver? Jim Loomis will be here before nightfall. And I have a plan that may save both of you. Will you stay here and help me? I... Yes, I'll help you. If you're the one I think you are, you can count on me. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Shortly after sundown, Jim Loomis rode into the town of Buckhorn. In order to carry out his plan, the first thing he needed was a gun. And oddly enough, the first man he encountered in Buckhorn was an Indian who was willing to trade a single-action six-gun for the saddle Jim had taken from his horse. Uh, here, a couple of dollar extra. Well, thanks. You're the biggest-hearted Indian I've ever seen. <laughs> Tonto likes saddle. Tonto? Who's that? Well, Tonto, though. That me. Oh, that's your name, huh? Ah. Well, Tonto, thanks for the trade. You got a good saddle, and I got what I hope's a good gun. I'll buy you a drink. Going across the street to the cafe. Oh, me not drink. What's that? I thought all in... Say, a lot of changes can happen in ten years, can't they? Ah. Well, thanks again, Tonto. I'll see you later. Ah. Uh-huh. You see me later. Here's your drink, stranger. Yeah, thanks. <sighs> Say, bartender, how long you been around this town? Ten, twelve years. Why? Remember a critter named Bart Vinton? Vinton? Well, sure, I remember him. Did you know him? Well, everybody knew Bart. Lived here till he died a few days ago. He was planted right over on Boot Hill. Yeah? What kind of a gent was he? Well, everybody figured Bart was a right respectable critter up until the time he died. Then what happened? When he was cashing in, he confessed to an old crime. It seems that an innocent man was doing time for it. Hmm. What did he say about this innocent man? Oh, nothing much. I guess he figured his confession had set the man free. Recollect the name of that man? Uh, let me see. It was Jim. Jim something or other. Jim Loomis, that was it. Loomis. Yeah, I'm sure that was it. Is Vinton's wife still living here in Buckhorn? Yeah. Lives in that uh, little white house. First one when you come into town on the East Trail. Funny thing, you asking about her. How's that? Well, you're the second hombre been in here today asking about Mrs. Vinton. Give me another drink. Oh, sure. Who was the first one? Oh, just a young kid. Sorry. Of... Hey, let go of my hand. That ring you're wearing. Where'd you get it? Let go of my hand. You're either loco or drunk. Either one. This ring is mine. Give it to me. I'll give you a crack on the head with this bottle if you don't let go. This ring is mine. My daughter gave it to me. You're lying. Used to belong to Jim Loomis, and I'm taking Why, it. Why, you... Better stand right where you are. My trigger finger's kind of itchy. The ring ain't worth shooting about. If you want to steal it, I ain't boy. stealing. It's mine. My name happens to be Jim Loomis. Jim Loomis? I don't know how you got hold of it, but I'm going to find out. Well, you're local Loomis. The sheriff's standing right back there by the poker table. All I have to do is yell. But and... you ain't going to yell. First time I've ever been robbed in my Stand life. Stand back, all of you. Here. I'll drill the first critter that goes for a gun. I only took what's legally mine. But if you want to argue about it, I'll pay off in lead. Sheriff, hey, sheriff. Hey, what's going on up here anyway? The hombre that just backed out of here was Jim Loomis. Loomis? Are you sure? That's what he claimed. Stuck a shooting iron in my face and took my ring right off my finger. Sam, Pete, come here. Yeah, yeah, what is it, Sheriff? I want you men to come with me. We've got a polecat to run down. I think he's heading for the Vinton house. Yeah? What makes you think so? Because he asked me a lot of questions about Bart and how he died and all that. And that was before he told me his name was Loomis. Come on, boys. I guess we won't need the horses, will we, Sheriff? Oh, the Vinton place ain't very far. I wonder if that critter knows the truth. If he really is Jim Loomis, he might... Yeah, there's bad blood there, all right. Sheriff, can I string along with you? Yeah, I guess so. Any reason why you want oh, to get in a... that mine. She's down at the Vinton place. That's so? Oh, we'll soon oh, find oh, out. Oh, oh. Hey, what's this? A masked man. A kid. You're the sheriff. That's no secret. What's the You're idea after coming... Jim Loomis. I'll be after you if you don't take off that mask. Loomis has gone toward the Vinton house. That's my business. Seems to me you're powerful nosy. I think I'll just I'll take you... I advise you not to draw, Sheriff. Have all three of you covered. Well, of all the... It must be sidekicks of Loomis. They're all working together. We are working together, although Loomis doesn't know it. Look here. I don't know who you are, but you're meddling with the law, Maybe and I'm my not... method is unusual, but I need your help. What are you trying to say? I want you to stay away from the Vinton house, at least for the next few minutes. I'm the law in this town, stranger. No masked out law... I don't want to use these guns, but I will if it becomes necessary. You must be loco. There's a murdering killer heading for a house where a defenseless woman yes, is liable. Yes, And my kid's there with him, my little girl. I know that, too. Well, there'll be a double murder if that crazy no, Loomis... No, there won't. An Indian friend of mine is watching the Vinton house. If you've got this thing all figured out, why are you I so... I want all... to prevent murder. I suggested to Mrs. Vinton that she asked the girl to stay with her. Sheriff, this hombre's plumb crazy. All right. You're holding the guns. 
What's your next move? We'll all move together. The only reason I'll use my guns is to be sure we move quietly. Do you agree, Sheriff? Play your string out, stranger. We'll see what happens. Good. Follow me. An old friend of yours, Mrs. Vinton. Open the door. Who are... Better close the door. We can talk better inside. What do you want? I guess you don't remember me, Mrs. Vinton. No, I... The name's Loomis. Jim Loomis. Loomis? Oh, I... Kind of familiar, ain't it? No, I... All I know is that she used to be a friend of my husband's. Yeah... Till he double-crossed me. Oh, but Bart made a mistake. He knew that, but he confessed everything before he died. I suppose you think that squared everything. Because he confessed. That doesn't make the ten years in prison any less. That won't bring my wife back to life. I know. But what you don't know is this. A gun. Ruth died because that double-crossing husband of yours framed me. There's only one way to balance that. Body and alive. So you're the next in line. So you're going to kill me? If it's the last thing I ever do. Well, I I can't stop you. I wonder what Ruth would say if she could see what you're going to do. Ruth would be glad I'm squaring things. I didn't know your wife very well. She left town right after you went away. Yeah, that's what I heard. And then I, I lost track of her. She's dead now. That's the only thing that's important. But you're going to be the same way inside of the next two minutes. You know... You didn't surprise me coming here tonight. I've been expecting you. I've been waiting all day. You figured I was coming? And you waited? I had to. There's someone here with me. I I couldn't leave. Someone? You ain't got the law. No, not the law. You wait and I'll I'll show you. Don't try any tricks because I'm in the mood. Come here, dear. Who's in that back room? Did you call me, Andy? Who's that? Hello. Who are you? Your niece, huh? It's the idea of bringing her out here. I just wanted you to know I wasn't alone. No, she ain't my niece. I wish she was. I don't get it. What's the idea? Well, she's really an orphan. Some Indians found her a few years ago and brought her into town. We're wasting time. I don't care who this kid is or where she came from. I'm going to... The bartender at the cafe sort of adopted her, but she spends a lot of time here with me. Why don't you tell me who he is, Andy? Oh, just a man, dear. Someone who's going to send me on a long trip. Trip? Can I go with you? (laughs) Well, that's up to him. Can I go with her? Will you let me go, too? Please? Hmm. You're a queer young one. You don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I do. If my Andy's going on a trip, I want to go with her. I can't figure it out. Seems like I've seen you someplace before. Oh! What's wrong? He's wearing Daddy's ring. He must have stolen it. What? The ring you're wearing. It's the one I gave to Daddy. Well, well, she's right. Where'd you get that ring? Well, it's mine. Got it back tonight. After ten years. Got my initials cut inside it. Found it on the bartender down at the cafe. You've got to give it back. It belongs to him. There's something about this kid... Her eyes, I... Hey, wait. Listen, little girl, you say this ring used to belong to you. Where'd you get it? Oh. Are you telling the truth? Why, sure, I'm telling the... It sounds impossible, but... What? Well, the ring was hung around her neck when the Indians found her. And I gave it to my daddy last Christmas. Your daddy? She means Lem Loftus. She calls him daddy. The ring must have belonged to her real father. No, Mama gave it to me... Before she went away. Good Lord. I could almost believe that... Oh, no, it can't be. Her eyes. They're almost like Ruth's eyes. Of course they're Ruth's eyes. Ruth's my name. Listen. Was your ma named Ruth? Yes. And your pa. I mean your real pa. Did she ever tell you anything about him? Nothing except... Except what? He was good and strong and brave. 
but he had to go away for a long time. How old are you? Nine. Going on ten. Oh, Lord. Thank the Lord. I've been a lawman for over 20 years. And I've never seen anything like that before. And I asked Mrs. Vinton to get a child to stay with her. I didn't hope for this much. And it was all on account of that ring I was wearing. It was a big risk. Loomis might have used that gun before. No, I... there was no danger. Toto traded Loomis that gun for his saddle. It's loaded with blanks. Well, I'm sure that now Jim Loomis is through with guns for good. I'm going to try to do everything I can for you, Ruth. We'll show the whole world that... that your mama was right when she described your daddy. I like you. And I hope we'll be together always. We will be together. Because you're mine. My own baby girl. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.